Uh, hi, good morning, dear friends. Uh, today we are reading the Word of God, uh, Luke chapter 4. Uh, thank you, Lord Jesus, for this chapter. You have been through a lot. You have been through everything that each and every one of us has been personally. You have experienced it all. So I thank you. Uh, lead us through this chapter. Give us revelation. Open our eyes. Amen. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being tempted for forty days by the devil. And in those days he ate nothing, and afterward, when they had ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Then the devil, taking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory. For this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. Then he brought him to Jerusalem, set him on the pinnacle of the temple, and said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. Then Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit to Galilee, and news of him went out through all the surrounding region, and he taught in the synagogues, being glorified by all. So he came to Nazareth, uh, where he had been brought up, and all his custom and sorry, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And he handed the book of the prophet, and he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable ear of the Lord. Then he closed the book, gave it back to the attendant and sat down, and the eyes of all who were in the synagogue were fixed on him, and he began to say to them, Today, the scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. So all bore witness to him and marveled at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? He said to them, You will surely say this proverb to me. Physician, heal yourself. Whatever we have heard done in Capernaum, do also here in your country. Then he said, Surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country, but I will, but I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when heaven was shut up three years and six months. There was a great famine throughout all the land, but to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath. Then he said, Surely I say to you, no prophet is accepted in his own country. 
But I tell you truly, many widows were in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, and there was a great famine throughout all the land. But to none of them was Elijah sent except to Zarephath in the region of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. Many lepers were in Israel in the time of Elijah the prophet, and none of them was cleansed except Naaman the Syrian. So all those in the synagogue, when they heard these things, were filled with wrath and rose up and thrust him out of the city, and they led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down over the cliff. Then, passing through the midst of them, he went away. Then he went down to Capernaum, a city of Galilee, and was teaching them on the Sabbaths. And they were astonished at his teaching, for his word was with authority. Now in the synagogue there was a man who had a spirit of unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, saying, Let us alone, what have we to do with you, Jesus of Nazareth? Did you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. But Jesus rebuked him, saying, Be quiet and come out of him. And when the demon had thrown him in their midst, it came out of him and didn't hurt him. Then they were all amazed and spoke among themselves, saying, What a word is this! For with authority and power he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And the report about him went out into every place in the surrounding region. Now he rose from the synagogue and entered Simon's house. Simon's wife's mother was sick with a high fever, and they made request of him concerning her. So he stood over her and rebuked the fever, and it left her, and immediately she arose and served them. When the sun was setting, all those who had any that were sick with various diseases brought them to him. And he laid his hand on every one of them and healed them. And demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, You are the Christ, the Son of God. And he rebuked them, didn't allow them to speak, for they knew that he was the Christ. Now, when it was day, he departed and went into a deserted place. And the crowd saw him and came to him, and tried to keep him from leaving them. But he said to them, I must preach the kingdom of God to the other cities also, because for this purpose I have been sent. And he was preaching in the synagogues of Galilee. Lord, thank you for this chapter, according to your will. Let us read the commentary and also thank you according to the canon of the church. <coughs> we glorify you with the um, said expression of, expressions of the church. Um, verse 1 This exodus of Jesus into the wilderness following his baptism has a dual symbolism. First, it fulfills the Old Testament type in which Israel journeyed in the wilderness for 40 years after its baptism in the Red Sea, and second, it prefigures our own journey through the fallen world after baptism as we struggle towards the kingdom. Verses 12 sorry, verses 2 to 12 on the temptation of Christ. See notes at Matthew 4. 1 to 11 was for note each time Christ rebukes the devil it is with the truth and power of scripture 
He teaches the faithful to become immersed in scripture in order to resist and drive away every temptation. See Psalm 118 verse 11. Verses 10 and 11. Satan vainly tries to use the scriptures as do the Pharisees in John 7, 52, but understands neither their truth nor their power. Knowing and quoting scripture without true understanding is worthless at best and ultimately condemnable. Without true understanding through the holy tradition of the church, the scriptures are robbed of their authority. See also Second Peter chapter 1, 19-21. Verse 13, Opportunity Time. See chapter 22, 42, 46 and chapter 23, verse 35. And also Matthew chapter 16, verses 21 to 23. Verse 18, being the eternal Son of God, Christ didn't become the Word's anointed Savior, but has always been our Savior from before the foundation of the world. It was Christ speaking through Isaiah who said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Isaiah 61, 1. No, he doesn't say the Spirit has come upon me. When the Spirit of the Lord descended on Jesus at his baptism, see chapter 3, verse 22, this was a sign revealing an eternal, not temporal, true to the people. Verse 19, acceptable year, the time of the incarnation when the kingdom of heaven has come to earth. See also 2 Corinthians 6, verse 2. Verses 22 to 30. This double response of marveling in verse 22 and rejection in verse 29 occurs frequently in those who encounter Christ. See chapter 11 verse 14 to 16 and John 9, 16. His being rejected in his own country fulfills the rejection of the Old Testament prophets such as Elijah in verse 26 and Elijah in verse 27 and foreshadows his rejection, rejection by the whole Jewish nation at his trial before Pilate in John 19, 14 and 15. Christ accepts that according to the Father's will, not other will of the Jew. He, here, the hour of his passion has not yet come. See John 8, 20, verse 31. Christ begins preaching and healing on the Sabbath to show that the new creation began where the old creation ceased. Verse 32, with authority, unlike the prophets of old and the teachers of his day who taught in the third person, the Lord says, Christ taught in the first person, I say to you. See also Matthew 5, <coughs> verses 16 to 22. This passage is read from the 1st of September, the beginning of the ecclesiastical new year. Uh, verses 22 to 30. This passage is read on July 20, the feast of the prophet Elijah. Verse 35, be quiet. See note on Matthew 12, 16 to 21. Verse 38, see note on Matthew 8, 14 to 17. Verse 39, rebuke the fever. That which was rebuke was some living thing unable to understand the influence of him who rebuked it. For it is not reasonable to rebuke a thing without life and unconscious of the rebuke, nor is it astonishing for there to exist certain 
powers that inflict harm on the human body. And this is the Orthodox Study Bible citing a certain church father whose name was abbreviated here. Verse 43, Christ's primary mission was to preach the kingdom, miracles and healings, testify both to the truth of the message and the identity of the teacher. See chapter 5, verse 24, this same pattern holds true in the church. See Acts 4, 29-30. So, also thank you, as we always do, for this chapter. Uh, teach us how to understand this chapter, how to analyze it, how to see what happened uh, hidden in the structure. And um, we see that the first uh, picture is Jesus filled with the Holy Spirit, meaning Jesus is not alone. He is, has uh, the um, third person of the Trinity in him, so there are two already, the two that testify, not only he. And furthermore, it, it is the Spirit, the Holy Spirit that fills him, who leads him into the wilderness, so there are two, two agents, one of them is the leader, it is the Holy Spirit who first fills him, uh, so he is the essence of Jesus, of his being, and second, he um, causes him to act in a certain way, uh, so he is not only indwelling, but he's also activating force, he's moving him, so he's both um, static, and active, so he, the Holy Spirit has uh, two um, characters revealed in the first verse alone. And uh, this fullness of the Holy Spirit is in stark contrast with contrast with the. Uh, with the place he is, Jesus is led to, meaning, namely the wilderness, an empty space, space void of life, and it goes to show that the Holy Spirit is enough. Having the Holy Spirit in Jesus is already enough to bring life into the wilderness. They both are enough to inhabit even the wilderness because they are the life in combination and what happens in the wilderness is uh, uh, Jesus is um, tempted for 40 days by the devil uh, meaning this exercise reminds of the how the same Holy Spirit um, that dwelt among the Israel nation when they left Egypt also led them into the wilderness and 40 was the number of years that they were exposed to the harshness of the wilderness and um, temptations and uh, it says uh, Jesus ate nothing nothing just as the israelites ate nothing but the food that was provided by the father in the wilderness it's um, already two or three aspects of the journey of israel that repeat in jesus after his uh, filled with the Holy Spirit and led into the wilderness. Very, very strong parallels. Not one, not two, but three parallels. <clears throat> and the second verse finishes with uh, the words, and afterward, when they had ended, 
he was hungry, meaning it was a certain period when he was not hungry. He ate nothing, but he was not hungry. Uh, same happened to the Jews when they were in the, in the wilderness, in the, in the, on their way to the Promised Land. They ate nothing of, uh, of a human nature that the humanity knew as food, nothing usual they had food provided by the Father, but they were also not hungry, but when the supernatural supply of 40 years ended, they had to eat natural food again. Um, it, it doesn't say Jesus uh, ate, it only states that this supernatural state of 40 days when he ate nothing and was not hungry ended when the 40 the appointed period of 40 days ended and suddenly he started feeling like a nat natural human being he was hungry um, so he experiences the fullness of God by the Holy Spirit and leading of God into the wilderness and then the state of not being hungry because uh, the Holy Spirit is enough and uh, the provision that is not earthly food is enough but when God decides to end this uh, elevated state he of course feel, feels as an ordinary human again he is hungry um, it says nothing that the Holy Spirit uh, left him, but it only says that the appointed period, those days, ended in verse 2, and then he suddenly is hungry. It means that this elevated state only lasted a certain number of days appointed by God. And then he's human, in his human state again. And this is what I take from those two verses. It's, it's a very, very strong message. And it gives me a lot of information of who Jesus was um, and how close, really, closely related his experience was with that of the Israelites leaving Egypt and how important the Holy Spirit is because he's the one who fills him and leads him so um, then um, yes I want to um, unfortunately end this um, Bible study here and unfortunately, I'm saying because I want to think about this information that I gathered in um, only two verses, verse 1 and verse 2. And the whole chapter contains, um, consists of 44 verses. Imagine how much information I could deduct from all those 44 verses. And I want to to stop there today and well those two verses only and see how we will proceed with this bible study tomorrow and i wish you a lovely day be blessed be be happy in the lord be glorified as you lift him up uh one more thing when jesus reads from the prophet Isaiah that he was handed in a synagogue on the Sabbath. He says in verse 18, um, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me and he explains to why a few reasons. Um, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor he has sent me to heal the broken hearted 
to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed. When I hear recovery of sight to the blind, I think about uh, Matthew, and this is uh, was uh, what was highlighted for me strongly in uh, Matthew while I was studying that. You can hear that in the playlists. Recovering the sight to the blind is very, very, very important, and we always pray for Jesus to open our eyes and to heal us to be able to see and um, it is a lot of information we thank you jesus for this bible study finding the parallels between you and the people of israel and uh, we bless everyone who is listening and praying and believing in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we thank you that um, you experience everything, whatever all believers have ever experienced the same way, in a supernatural way. This was your earthly path and you understand each and every one of us. You even understand what the Israelites are going through, or went through and probably are going through true right now and each and every believer is going through right now everyone who is hungry and everyone who is who has a mission and uh, who believes in the scripture and we thank you for each and every believer on this side in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we pray Amen